All right, so it's my complete and total pleasure to uh, feature this next band on the show, India's In. And um, I, I listened to a couple of their songs. I um, played around a little bit with well, at least one of them. And um, it, it's just, it, 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 it's like punk rock. And what I love about it is that there are some songs that have that loose feeling, like you feel as though you're watching them in a basement or you feel it really is like reminiscent of the kinks and a lot of other punk rock that's out there and or that that was out there years ago and some of the way you know the way that some of the songs are recorded it actually has an older feel but it's if it, 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 uh, there's there's good in that and there's good and tight production too i i, I believe that either way is good you know i mean i've i've literally heard songs i'll give a good example would be the kinks like i've heard songs from the kinks where i mean the amplifier was like ripped and they they got this horribly distorted sound from the guitar and they decided let's keep it and it sounded loose and there was a little bit of um you know room you can hear the reverb like in the room and uh, they left a lot of that stuff in, and it was really good, and, and it really felt good with the genre. But, you know, interestingly, the Kinks didn't always do songs of that style. They did songs um, that were different. They did so. I mean, uh, what's that song, uh, Come Dancing? That's, in my opinion, anyways, I mean, for what it's worth, um, in my opinion, that's a tighter production. You know, they, they included a lot of organ. Um, it doesn't have that punk rock feel. It's a good song, you know, and it's produced differently because that song is a different style. And I know I have, I have like shadow all over the place. I don't have expensive lighting. And I think that's something I'm going to invest in when I can. But let's just bring these guys over. It's the band, and I love this band name, Plague Vendor. And in my opinion, they're doing everything right. Now, how did I get, you know, introduced to this band? Well, I put a call out there and I said, hey, this is Tag Your Friend Day. This is a couple days ago and I've been making videos off that post since then. I put a call out there and I said, hey, if you have a friend who's a musician, um, an indie musician, tag him or her and send me the link. You know, I wanted to see what other people were listening to for indie music. And the band Plague Vendor was sent over to me, and I listened to maybe five of their songs, and I'm going to play two. They're both fantastic. I do want to show a contrast between the two songs. Really simple. No, that's not right. C, F, and E minor. So you would think it's out of the E minor um, scale, but it's more like E flat because it has more of a, like, a, like a major key feel. But let's just stop the song for a second. Right away, we're dealing with a very old uh, style of music, and it's 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 done it's done in 2024 and they're really holding true to old punk and i love the fact that it's just people rocking and rolling over over basically two chords or three chords it, it's that and those chords are pretty much the whole entire song but as you listen to the production listen to how loose everything is it's perfect you feel as though you're hanging out with the band as they're performing this song and i don't think that's done on accident i think that that, that little bit of extra reverb on the drums and that little bit of extra, you know, um, space for the vocals and um, the simplicity of the chord changes and, you know, the guitar comping really not playing a lot of notes, just kind of like, think, 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 something off the top end of the chord, you know, it, it, it's, it, to me, it's, it, it's really made and it's produced and released in a way that brings you into the era, brings you into the genre, and it's just fun. It's, it's, it's just a really well put together song. And the music video is awesome.
So right away you hear that little bit of like like a radio filter. I would say it's like a radio filter put in. I mean, when I when my um, vocals when, on, on the songs that I um, have done, when I have a little bit of raspiness or scratchiness, that's electronic. It's not actually me. It's kind of imitating a 60s type of microphone setup. Um, it's uh, I use a um, a plugin and it and there's a radio filter, and it adds a little bit of that um, that sound that that 1960s singing in a bar sound. I don't know the exact name of what that's called. You know, I, I wish I did. I wish I was a little bit more schooled on that subject. But listen to it. Listen to the vocals. I think they have the same mixer I have. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Nice telly. Yeah, that's nice raspiness. Oh yeah, you can hear there's a, he's singing through a filter. There's some kind of filter there. Really great, but that's reminiscent of the genre. You know, that's what you want. The song wouldn't sound the way it does. It wouldn't sound as good, in my opinion, if you didn't use that filter on the vocals. You know, where you kind of you feel like you're singing through um, something. You know, and that's. That's the feel. That's that's the genre. That's the song. That's that's how it is. You know, I love it. So what you have, in my opinion, is simplicity um, all around with the instrumentation, and that's not a knock on the band. I mean, I, I, a heck of a lot of my songs, I keep the instrumentation really simple because there's something else that I want to feature, and in my opinion, with this song, it's absolutely the vocals, the lyrics, the message, um, but the what he's doing with the vocals, the way he's singing, and the way the vocals are engineered is bringing you into a different era. I mean, this sounds like 1960s punk rock. I mean, it just does. I think it's brilliant the way that it's, the way that it's, um, I know as I scratch my leg, I'm going like behind the screen. I apologize for that. It's brilliant the way that it's engineered and produced, but I want to stop this real quick. And I want to go to another song of theirs that I think is um, just fantastic, but produced and engineered differently. Now, listen to how different the production of this song is. Fantastic. These music videos are awesome. So you have this real heavy introduction, and then as soon as the singing starts, like good production and good engineering, all the instrumentation comes comes out so you can focus on the lyrics. There's not a lot of noise. So you can focus on the singing, which is what good songwriting is. Mm. I love the bass. Hey, the organ. Music video is awesome. Okay. So, so just listen to the difference of how this song is engineered. A lot going on. You have an organ, like a Hammond organ. A lot more instrumentation. A lot more nuances with the instrumentation. And then, and it's in a second, you'll, see, you'll hear it. Right 
right there. Just everything about that. The stop, the fact that the organ kept going, the drums before you get back to the to the verses. This is completely engineered and produced differently. The production is tighter. There's less echo. There's, there's, um, there's more EQ. Um, there's probably a little bit of... Um, you know, a, a little bit taken off the top and taken off the bottom of, of the instruments so you can focus less on bleed and really um, make every instrument a tight package, you know, on the uh, on the DAW. And, um, yeah, I, I, and it, it's weird because I read, a, I read a comment, um, you know, on this song here where someone was a little bit maybe disappointed that this song was, it sounded too poppy. You know, um, and I get what that I get what they're coming from, and I love the fact that they um, are fan enough of the band to really express their feelings. Um, but I, 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 I think what's what what you have, and and this is just my opinion, and take it for what it's worth. I remember um, when Stick Figure first came out, uh, his first few albums were um, were you know, it, it was. I think they were made. He's from Massachusetts, which is weird because he, he plays such beautiful reggae music. He uh, lives in L.A. now, but um, well, somewhere in California. But the first couple albums that he made himself, um, the production was very loose. You know, it was kind of like let's put the song together, and he played all the instruments himself, and the music was great. The music was great, so great that it helped him launch his career. Then the production and the engineering got a little bit tighter as he began to incorporate more professionals, you know, into his into his life and into his work. And the the songwriting, the producing, the engineer, all of it got tighter. And there was it was not as loose. And um you can you can really see the attention to detail in the production. And you know, uh, it's nice to have music that's raw. The first album from Dire Straits was raw, right? It was really raw. And a lot of people like that. But I will say, <laughs> and this is going to make me look like a jerk, there's, you, you know, um, sometimes people confuse raw with um, someone kind of fumbling their way through the beginning of engineering their own music or producing their own music. I don't know if that's the case here. I honestly don't. Um, but, you know, it was the case with Dire Straits. Yeah, their first album sounded raw. Um, because, in my opinion, it wasn't produced 100% with um, all the proper tools, you know. And then as they figured out their sound, the production got a lot better. And that's that's exactly what happened with, with Stick Figure, again, in my opinion, where the first couple albums were produced in and in, in more of a loose way. Music was beautiful. Uh, but then when the production got tight, you can hear how the songs sounded more radio friendly, which I know not a lot of people like to hear because they hear the term radio friendly and they think, no, every, you don't want to sound like Taylor Swift. You don't want to sound like Dua Lipa. Like, you know, you want to stay away from that. Well, there's a reason why Dua Lipa and Taylor Swift are so popular. And one part of it is the fact that their production is absolutely phenomenal. Like if you listen to the production of a Taylor Swift song or to the production of another pop artist that's out there, it, the production is insane. It's tight. It's a tight package. So good production doesn't necessarily mean that someone's sounding too poppy, you know. And so I and I see that when I when I went through Plague Vendor's um, discography and I was bouncing around from song to song. A lot of their songs have that loose sound, like you're just hanging out with them and they're performing for you. And I love that. I love that, especially with punk, you know. But a lot of punk bands, um, almost all of them, do songs that aren't 100% in the genre of punk. They kind of veer out and they do other types of music. And the punk production doesn't always work for that song that they're doing, like the Kinks. And you have Come Dancing, right? If you listen to Come Dancing, it's not produced the same way a lot of their other stuff is that is completely in the in the punk genre because the punk genre needs to have a looser 
more open and earthy feel for the production. And I think that this song here, you have uh, instrumentation that they're giving attention to. You have a lot going on. And that bass is tight. The drums are tight. You have a lot more instrumentation going on. You need to do what they did. Which, in, listen to this. Listen to that. How can you make that feel loosey-goosey, earthy, crunchy? You can't. You need to have tight production when you're doing all this instrumentation. Otherwise, it sounds like a complete and total mess. And I've done that in the past with some of my songs. I've had a million instruments and I'm like, ah, oh, that's fine. And then I release the song and it's a cacophony of noise. Um, so when you have a lot going on, you're forced to produce a song this way. You know, but that's, but they did, in my opinion, they did exactly what needed to be done for this song because of the way it was mixed, you know. So, I mean, I love this band, Plague Vendor. I think that they're fantastic on so many levels. The fact that they can do that punk rock and just bring you right into that world and the fact that they can do stuff that needs more production, I think they're very versatile. And, I mean, look, I mean, if you, what's it say? Look, Ticketmaster. They're friggin' selling tickets on Ticketmaster for crying out loud. So they're doing something right, you know? So best of luck to you guys. I really, really like your sound. I am amazed that you guys, um, you know, are this good. When someone, when I asked for people to send me indie artists they're listening to, and then this got sent to me, um, I was, and I started listening to it, I was like, man. And this is like, these guys are versatile. They have this type of music. That uh, incredible, incredible. Now, I don't know, and you know, I know the name of the show is Indie is in, and I know that I want to um, focus on independent artists. Um, I I don't know how indie at this point you are having tickets being sold at Ticketmaster usually makes me think there's some type of um, agent and, um, you know, um, record label that's behind you, but maybe not. But at any rate, you know, w w what I look at is the fact that, like, you know, I don't always go by, and let me just move this out of the way here. I know my, my, uh, <laughs> my, my videos that I was making earlier. I don't always go by, you know, because independent music kind of has this, you know, like, oh, indie music. It's, 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 a, it's a person who is independent. They don't use a label. They don't use this. They don't use that. Well, yeah, it could be. Could be. But like Joe Bonamassa is one of the most famous blues artists out there. And he started off, um, you know, as an indie musician and technically kind of still is. You know, he hired a manager and another producer and then created his own record label. And then through those efforts, uh, he sells tickets on Ticketmaster. And if you break it down and look at it on paper, he's still considered an indie musician, even though he's like the number one selling blues artist of all time or something. So I, I, I do have, I'm pretty liberal with the... Um, definition of indie you know there are some indie artists that have actually signed with record labels but they're still um living the indie artist life and even though they're signed by a record label i still consider them an indie artist <laughs> so um yeah but anyways i'm gonna put the uh, information down below for this awesome band and um hope i didn't offend anyone with my opinions or my thoughts on things um it's really all positive i think that everything that you're doing is fantastic so keep it up and um you know maybe i'll come see you if you come to florida who knows um okay so i'm gonna put the information down below for the band and i'll put their youtube channel there and their youtube channel does have um you know where you can buy tickets and stuff um uh, to see them live and that's it my name is Artie Astor and i am your host thank you for watching this episode stay tuned for the next one